You talked about um, how these individuals are trying to say, how do we create a new business? Right. Uh, in their companies, have they been successful already in extending their products and bringing products to market? I'm wondering, does it take a foundation of being successful at what you're doing currently, your core, mm -hmm. before you can be successful at a new business? You earn the right to build new businesses in okay. the sense that if your core business is going to heck in a handbasket, mm -hmm. then uh, you probably need to be spending some time uh, riding the ship, right? Okay. But once you've got a ship that is at least doing well enough, is at least stable enough, then you've got to be a little paranoid. So as long as you've got a ship that's either stable or doing well, then you really should be spending a lot of time on figuring mm -hmm. out new business opportunities. So why do I say a lot of time? There's something that people call the success trap. The success Absolutely. trap happens when you're doing well. And so somebody comes to you and says, hey, we need to innovate. We need to do this new thing. And you say, leave me alone. I'm making you money. Everything's great. Don't rock the boat. Don't rock the boat. But you know, I have, uh, I have a, a slide that I use a lot when I'm lecturing. And it has a dozen companies on it. Uh, they've all had near-death experiences. Some of them are out of business now, like Lehman Brothers. Uh, some of them have recovered, uh, like Xerox and Kodak. They're, they're certainly not the world-beating companies they were years ago, but they're good, solid companies. And then there are a couple that, uh, that are shadows of their former selves. So what I'm illustrating by the slide is not that anybody's, uh, everybody's at risk per se, but every one of those companies on that slide were mm -hmm. the world's best company in their field for a very long period of time. They were the best in the world, and some of them don't exist anymore. How necessary is it for a company to come to that, that crisis point in order to, for innovation to take place? Is that, do you have to manufacture a crisis or create one or take advantage of one? Do people actually manufacture crises out there? Oh, absolutely. We, As a matter of fact, that's one of the... We call them firefighters in project there management. Go. There we but, go. Absolutely. Yes. And, and, you know, unfortunately, often it is necessary. Mm -hmm. Great leadership is about, as you said, manufacturing a crisis or what we call a burning platform so that people see the urgency and the requirement to make these things happen before they happen to you. Uh, so, you know, when Lou Gerstner came into IBM back in 1993, uh, a lot of people don't remember, but he came from RJR Nabisco, uh, which... When you think about it, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, this was a computer company, and here's a guy from CPG, Food. Consumer Packaged Goods. Why did they hire him? Well, no one else would take the job. The reason was that everybody knew the company was over. The analysts on Wall Street were doing some of parts calculations. Uh, the board explicitly hired Lou Gerstner to break up the company. Break it up. Sure. And he came in, fortunately for global commerce, he came in and said, I'm going to write this ship and make it work. So as a result of that burning platform, he was able to make an extraordinary number of changes. And the result is, is it's a good end of the story. But to your point, Ken, you know, you really want to make sure you don't end up in that crisis situation. Mm -hmm. And the way to do that is to create burning platforms as a leader. Ken, have you seen that, that sort of dynamic happen in, in your career? Yeah, typically um, the burning platform is, is driven by competition. When uh, yeah. you, you talked about when we're doing okay and everything is fine, yeah. it's the analogy of the boiling frog. You put them in a uh, pot of cool water and just turn the heat up a little bit, they will boil to death. Um, I want to ask you another question, though, is that practically, if, if there's not that burning, that urge, that sensation, what steps do you take to, to create that sense of urgency? Great. Well, incidentally, I, I want to point out... Uh, I love the frog in the water yeah. analogy because people see a very slow process and it's especially large companies have momentum, they have revenues. General Motors, also known as government motors now, is a great example. Yeah. So um, how do you create that platform? I'd say by creating significant objectives mm -hmm. that as a CEO or division leader or a team leader, you create objectives that seem almost out of reach. They're not maniacal. Mm -hmm. They're not uh, uh, idiotic, but they're just enough out of reach that people have to rally in order mm -hmm. to achieve them. And you stick to that. Okay. You change course as necessary to get there, mm -hmm. but you keep the vision and the objective generally the same. 